celebrate, you know, the people that are doing things better than me. I don't care if some of my audience leaves me and follows someone else. They weren't meant to be my audience. And we're live. Marina Simone is in the building. How are you, Marina? I'm amazing. How are you? I'm feeling fantastic. And you just gave me a little tour of your home. And it seems like you got the putting green, you got the pool, you're out here living the dream in beautiful weather. Did you see yourself living here three or four years ago? I did. I actually did. That's the coolest part is the visualization stuff. It really does work. <laughs> It, it's crazy how just when you become obsessed with something, you find a way to get there. That's true. So true. And your whole come up and story is really interesting. And I know that I'm fired up to ask you certain elements of it because so many people want to be online marketers, right? It sounds so sexy, the idea of generating leads online and being able to work from your computer, the remote lifestyle. It sounds super sexy, which is a big reason why people get into network marketing because it's kind of this gateway uh, into entrepreneurship. But a lot of people after that step, they want to get into internet marketing and online mm -hmm. marketing. And they quickly realize, number one, there's so much to learn. Number two, it's easy to get overburdened. And number three, it's freaking hard. And four, yes. if the technology doesn't piss you off enough before you even get <laughs> anywhere, it's not. But you are one of those rare gems absolute rare gems. You were killing it before you got into the internet game. And now you literally took it to, you know, you're, you're absolutely smashing it. Like, the, it's, thank you. It's amazing. It's really inspirational. Well, I appreciate that because I think that first off, when you get to a certain point of success, you're like, this is where I wanted to get. And now there's like bigger goals and so I think as entrepreneurs, when we get to a certain point of success, sometimes we forget to celebrate that and we forget to be in it. So I appreciate that because that reminds me to celebrate myself sometimes. And I think sometimes I'm so go, go, go that I can forget, okay, be present in that moment to celebrate these wins. So I appreciate that. And by the way, I've watched your podcast. I've seen and listened and I've seen what you've been doing. And I just think you're incredible. Thank you for inviting me to be on here. I'm just so honored to talk to your audience and to hopefully impact someone today. So thank you. We appreciate it. And I think a great way of, of bringing this back would be towards what was, like, I want to know pre Marina, like what, what would you okay. do? After, did you go to college? <laughs> I did, but not like traditional college. Like I was never going to be that sorority girl. Not that there was anything wrong with it, but I always felt like I didn't fit in as is in school. I always felt different. Um, I got made fun of in school, to be honest with you. And it, it was just, you know, it put me in a self-esteem place where I didn't feel good about myself. So when it came to college, my mom was in education. She was a principal. So it was like a must do thing. So I did it online. Um, every month I had a new class. And so I graduated completely online. I didn't like walk or anything. I got my bachelor's in accounting. Um, but I never like was like, Ooh, I want to, you know, be in college and do the college things. And that was my own thing. But um, I'm grateful that I was able to work for a third party company with Amazon with that degree, even though I made no money, let's be real here. Um, but I learned so much about business. I learned so much about what I didn't want to do in business. Um, so that was awesome. But I, I wasn't, you know, let's see, I graduated high school and I was working in bars. I was, you know, dancing on bars. I was, <laughs> you know, blowing fire and I was, you know, partying every other weekend. So I didn't go like from high school right to college. I went from high school to partying. I was partying in high school to it wasn't until probably like two years before I got pregnant with my daughters when I went to school and I finished four years in two years. Was that, kind of insane. Was that pregnancy kind of this serious shift in just your thinking and it kind of took you out of that party mode? Oh, I didn't have a choice. And actually I did have a choice because I could have been a hot mess express that just decided to keep partying <laughs> after. But yes, I always say this, my firstborn, she'll be 10 this year. She saved my life. She saved my life. And I'm grateful. I didn't grow up wanting kids. I didn't grow up wanting marriage. I didn't grow up wanting that life. I always wanted to 
be an entrepreneur. And I dreamed of walking New York City with a briefcase and my high heels. And that was my dream. And I have that dream, but it's different. And so I'm grateful that um, my journey happened for, you know, whatever reason for the impact that I'm making. I was 25 when I got pregnant. I was a single mom. Um, My husband and I were not together at the time. Um, So he is her father, but we just, we were both hot mess expresses. Like we just weren't ready to be parents and all we did was party. And so um, 25, you know, isn't that young necessarily, but I was, I was just a mess. So it's kind of, it's insane to see like, where I was, where I am now, and, and where I want to go. I, I, I can remember thinking, I remember she was like four months old, my, my almost 10 year old thinking like, this is it. This is going to be my life. Like I'm, I'm going to struggle to keep the lights on. I'm going to work for someone else. I'm going to be crying myself to sleep every night. I'm going to be eating peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Cause I couldn't afford like food. I couldn't afford a lot of things. And and so I remember being so sad and being so miserable and network marketing was introduced to me when my daughter was a year old. And that was, like you said, the gateway for, for a new life, for sure. Well, thankfully, PB and J's are so bomb and you can definitely, yeah, you can right? definitely live happy for quite some time. I don't time. even like peanut butter. Let's be clear. I think it's disgusting. So I forced myself. <laughs> <laughs> And so a year in, you're you're doing this thing, you're just making it work, you know, paycheck to paycheck lifestyle, following the crowd, not yep. feeling like you're being yourself, not like stepping into your power. You get a call to get into some sort of direct sales company. And mm-hmm. what is that? What goes on in your head throughout that that next 12 months? Okay. So first off, when I got introduced to it, I was like, oh, I'm gonna be a million dollars. Like this is it. Like this is my chance. I was so excited. Um, and then I didn't make any money for two years. So I just want to be clear. I failed miserably and, um, my mom and everybody was just like, what are you doing? Right. As entrepreneurs, we have these ideas and we can see these visions that no one else can see. And I could see it. I could taste it. I could feel it. But I was starting to get to a place where I was like, maybe this isn't going to work. Maybe I'm supposed to just be stuck here forever. Right. That doubt was seeping in. Um, then I started doing some serious visualization work. I'll never forget. It was 2013. I was sitting in my bed and I was crying myself to sleep yet again, because this wasn't working for me. Right. And I did this exercise where I sat down and wrote down and visualized what it is exactly I wanted my life to look like in the next five years. What did I want it to look like? So I like wrote out this story, like a short story, but I could feel it, taste it, hear it, see it right? Like I made it real. And I said by 2015 or 2016, I wanted to be making 10 grand a month. Do you know that in 90 days I was making 10 grand a month after I did that visualization exercise? Now I'm not saying that's going to work for everyone, but every day, two times a day, I read that story to myself and I visualized it. 90 days later, I hit that 10 K a month mark. And it was the weirdest thing what shifted was my mind. What shifted was what I was focusing on. What shifted was where I was throwing my energy. Um, even now I catch myself sometimes. I'm like, nope, your energy's got to flow where you want it to go. And so that, that was something that was really powerful for me. Do you think that by having that story locked in, you're able to translate a vision to other people much more seamlessly? And because Absolutely. you're able to, to bring more people on with you in the journey, that's how that, you get, kind of get that momentum? Yeah, because it became, it became a vision that I had, but it became more than just about me. The vision that I had and the story that I created was taking other people on this journey with me was where my family was going to be at the end of this five years. It was more than just, I want to make money and people connect to mission. People connect to stories. So whether you're selling a product or you're selling a brand or you have this massive company, you know, when you're selling something, we have to be able to transfer the belief that we have in whatever we're doing, but also the mission. See, as people, we emotionally connect ourselves to what we buy and we emotionally connect ourselves to decisions we make. And so we have to learn how to trigger that in other humans. And one of the biggest parts is by you being connected to that, to that mission, you being connected to that emotional story that you have, so you can transfer it to someone else. Yeah. It's a straight file transfer. 
Yes. It's, it's airdrop. Air you gotta drop. airdrop it. <laughs> Air, airdrop technology is out of control for whenever I'm, I think about I mean, Wi Fi yeah. and Bluetooth, I'm like, how do we not all walk around just living cancer? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's crazy. But you know what's interesting? I think that, you know, this past weekend I saw you do a not this past weekend, it was like a month ago, time flies. But I saw you doing a training with Tanya Eliza. Now Tanya Eliza was on the podcast uh almost a year ago and her episode's top three inside of our inside of our podcast and she's amazing she's been doing a lot of great stuff for a long time i remember seeing you go to one of her conventions or one of her masterminds or seminars i think this was like two and a half years ago sorry if i'm wrong there and you were in the audience you know i remember she used you as a tutorial and i remember that because i saw you in the video when i was making the preview for her episode for this podcast and then two and a half years later, you're training on stage with Tanya on a subject, peer-to-peer, mano y mano. What did that feel mm. like? It was awesome. First off, I just feel what gives me the most anxiety right now is like that level up feeling of like, I'm playing in a different pond than I was two and a half years ago. Like I'm not with the little fish, like all of a sudden the fish got bigger. So it was a full circle moment for me because I look up to her and I love her and I appreciate everything that she's doing in our industry. And I appreciate the raw and realness from her. And then I appreciate how much she inspires and empowers me to continue to step out into my truth. So I was nervous, honestly. And, and, and I've never been nervous to speak in front of people. I've spoke on stages in front of 5,000, 10,000 people. And I was nervous all over again because I'm in that level up moment of speaking with peers, speaking with Tanya Liza, speaking, you know, um, on stages with other leaders. It, it's it's kind of an aha moment for me of like, you deserve to be here, you know, step into that power. Now it's it's you're you're on that level and it's weird. It's weird to be honest, but I'm grateful and I'm honored. It was such an honoring moment for me. It seems like you have this personality that it's just kind of like bitch test me you know <laughs> i do have that that's the south florida in me i definitely have that <laughs> like oh sure. yeah like tell me yeah. i can't do it let's see what goes down <laughs> yeah that actually motivates me to a point it does it's like when someone tells me i can't do something i'm like i'm gonna show you and i'm gonna 10x it but then i have to also be careful with that because otherwise it could take me down a dark road too so <laughs> But yeah, I do have, I do have that in me for sure. Do you have an all in type of personality? And what I mentioned is one of my good friends, Dan, uh, absolute boy genius, Dan Hunt. I think he was episode 40. Uh, he started and, uh, started multiple companies, had successful exits, He's 25 years old. His first company he built at 19, raised $42 million, just absolute genius. And we were talking about uh, just vices and he, you know, his personality is he has such an addictive personality to the point where if he smokes a cigarette, he'll smoke, you know, a pack a day. If he starts drinking, he'll drink every night. If he smokes weed, he'll smoke every day. If he does business, mm -hmm. he'll do business every day. Do you yeah. have the type of mindset? Like when you get into something, you go all in on it and it could go both ways. Yeah. So for me, I'm actually type two bipolar and I've been actually sharing this more and more. Um, anxiety, depression, just had a baby 10 months ago today. Um, so the hormones are crazy. So I'm very all in. I'm very black or white. There is no gray area for me. So feeding my brain the proper nutrition is a must. And I don't just mean food. I mean, what goes in will come out literal for me, very literally. Um, a, a lot of entrepreneurs have mental illness. A lot of, you know, famous people that we see have mental illness. You know, Kate Spade, great example. You know, everybody's like so surprised. I'm not because, and I'm not saying like, oh, I'm at that level or whatever, but mental illness is real and a lot of entrepreneurs have it. And so I have to be very mindful of my time. I have to be mindful of my schedule. So something that makes me so successful is something that I have to have to be healthy. A schedule? And I think, uh-huh, a schedule. I have to schedule in my downtime. I have to schedule in my family time. I have to schedule in my work hours. I have to schedule in 
my coffee time. If my brain doesn't have schedule, then I can go manic. And that's very dangerous for someone who's bipolar. So when you talk about the addictive behaviors, um, yeah, I go all in for sure. For you, sure, for sure. Are there benefits though with the, the manic depression? Yeah, very much because I'm extremely creative. Um, I can see things that others can't. I can feel things that others can't. I feel like it's a gift, to be honest with you. Um, it's just a part of my journey. And it's a part of my story, you know, sharing these pieces is something that I never thought I would because I have to be a certain way, a certain leader, a certain influencer. I have to only talk about certain things. And I think that mental illness isn't spoke about enough. And there's a lot of entrepreneurs that are dealing with it. And so like when I started sharing, even just last week, I had two massive, like massive influential women. I didn't even know we're following me on Instagram that said, thank you for sharing, but they're not ready to share that with their audience, but they feel so alone that they are also struggling and they feel like they have to show up a certain way for their audiences. And I just, so I feel like there's a benefit of why I personally have to go through this journey um, for sure. But you know, it's scary when people don't know how to get the help for it or don't know how to manage it. There's moments where I get manic and I have to disappear for a week, you know, just to, to deal with, deal with my brain and get my brain back on track. It's a different, it's a chemical imbalance that I have. Mm, chemical imbalance. That's going to be your next t-shirt. <laughs> I'm in heels, chemically imbalanced. <laughs> Let's do it. I have one that says medicated for your protection, but I don't wear that one often. <laughs> <laughs> But it's interesting. I mean, you're, how the brain works, how yep. in our society, we talk about this all the time. The digital detox is real. We're addicted to our phones. It's not normal. It's not good for the brain. But yet, it's the first thing we wake up to. It's the last thing we go to bed to. It's this dopamine rush. I mean, there's events in LA all the time now where there's actually phone detox events where you go in and you take your phone and you put it into a cupboard, just like you're back in, uh, in a cubby, just like you're back in first grade and you just go socialize and you're like oh hey how are you nice to meet you name's len jones and it's like you get to meet people and and talk but it's just interesting that having that break and giving our brain the fuel we need is so crucial and whoever can continuously solve that problem i mean that's just a problem that needs to be solved it does you know and, and part of the anxiety that i was having was always thinking i had to be on social media showing up a certain way so that's very scheduled i set a timer when i'm on social media sometimes it looks like i'm showing up a lot more than i am it's called outsourcing i learned that from nadia milton right outsourcing um so it's important you know our brains are so powerful we have to protect them. You know, my husband shared with me yesterday, he goes, do you know that when Steve Jobs died, he had a brain of a, of a 27 year old. I thought that was so powerful. I was like, babe, I'm so proud of you that you knew that information. But then it got me thinking, what was Steve Jobs doing to his brain? Cause he had mental illness too. What was he doing to take care of his brain? So now that's like my next thing. I'm going to be diving into all of that. Cause I'm going to be doing the same things that he did. I want my brain to be like a 27 year old when I'm, you know, 50, 60 or whatever. Have you learned some of those things since you've started diving into that? In terms um, of so a little bit is meditation. Actually, a lot of it's meditation every day, 30 minutes a day. He meditated. Um, also the certain nutrition that he was feeding himself. That's super, super important, you know, for mental illness. One of the biggest things is like with the chemical imbalances, amino acids, my body doesn't produce them the same as someone else's. So amino acid intake is really, really important. Um, what was the other thing? Greens what, are what, really important. What foods give you the biggest amino acid jump? Um, so for me, I use a product I get off of Amazon. It's vegan protein. It's just vegan protein tablets and they're pre-digested and they have like, I think it's like six or seven of the amino acids, something like that. Don't quote me. I don't know, but it's something that I've been taking for a long time. Processed foods, big no, no for me. I have to be careful. I don't drink alcohol anymore. I used to once in a blue, I don't even go there. It just makes me feel like crap. So I don't even care. Like I'm good, you know? So so simple things like that. Um, and then just really being mindful of 
you know, the water intake. That's huge. You know, the more water I drink, the better I feel. And I used to never drink water. <laughs> never. Mm-hmm. So that's big too. In terms of the daily method of operations, you're super scheduled, you're super structured. I know, I believe uh, Marina, another Marina, your assistant. So you guys are coworkers right now? Marissa. Yeah, Marissa, my work wife. Marissa. Yeah, your yes, work wife. My work wife. She's, mm-hmm. a bad, she's a badass and you guys really are always is. working together. Yeah. When you, when you brought, was Marissa kind of your first big teammate when, in terms of your personal team? Yeah. So for my brand, she is like my right hand. She is like amazing. And I remember two years, it'll be two years in May since she's been on board full time. And then we have three virtual assistants that we work with. And then we outsource a lot of the things that I was, her and I were doing for a long time. But I remember when I brought her on board, letting go of the control was a big piece for me, like letting things not to be perfect and knowing they weren't going to be perfect, but still getting content out there was important. And I think sometimes we can get paralyzed by perfection and especially me. And so I don't want to be paralyzed by perfection. So when I brought her on, I was very clear that there were things that were going to come off my plate. That didn't mean go put more on my plate because that was something else I did because I brought her on. I was like, oh, let me go do 5,000 other things. No, bring her on to take some off your plate. And now we're bringing people on to take stuff off her plate. So yeah, it's been a super big blessing to have her in my life. Um, cause I'm, you know, I can be crazy <laughs> sometimes, you know what I mean? And that, well, sometimes crazy is good and you're a great, yeah. you're, crazy can, can swing in a crazy way. But with that said, I feel like there's a lot of people on that journey right now that they are working for themselves. They're building an online business and they're trying to release control or they're trying to bring on somebody, but that's just like a huge jump, right? From going from just being a, say a network marketer to a full-time online marketer from an Mm -hmm. online marketer to building a team and then being, you know, in charge of somebody else's livelihood. What, what can you give insights into and and what people should look to, like what, what point should someone bring on their first hire as an online marketer? And then what should, and what should that position be? Like, what does that mean? Yeah. So I think one of the things with social media is obviously, you know, the posts that we create, I truly, nobody writes my posts. I write them. No one writes my emails. I write them. And however, that doesn't mean I'm actually, you know, physically posting on myself or I'm creating the imagery or I'm actually putting the emails and pressing the scheduling and sending. No, I want to create the content, but then I have other people that are getting it done because especially as a mom, I have a 10 month old, I have almost 10 year old, I have a husband and I have a life. And what we do this for is for our families and for that freedom. So I don't want to be attached to my phone or my computer. Now there are some days, don't get me wrong, where it's like a 12 hour day. Let's be 100 here. Like, let's be clear. But I also can go shut off for a month if I want to. So I have that beautiful piece of it. The things you hate doing is what you should be outsourcing first. I hate editing videos. I am not a fan of creating imagery. I am not like this artsy type of person, even though my stuff looks beautiful. It ain't me. My blog, it looks gorgeous. I don't do it. It's my content, my ideas, my my brain, but I know that my strength is in that and it's not in the other things. So I would say the things you cannot stand doing, outsource. And there's so many, there's so many amazing places where you can find, you know, people that are going to work for seven, eight bucks an hour. And that's a lot of money to them. That's a lot of money to them in countries that they're in. So there's nothing wrong with that. And I don't think anyone should feel guilty for that. You're, you're, you're bringing on someone else, giving them an opportunity and, and you're, you have an employee almost, right? So I think it's a good thing. Yeah. The whole bringing down the team and then, and then creating processes where there's those fail safes. Uh, because if, you know, one thing happened to Marissa or whoever is someone's first or second employee, does the whole ship sink, you know, creating no. those systems yes. is, is definitely part of, part of the, key oh, we there. record everything Marissa does. She's recording and we're putting into folders. So if something happens or whatever, 
I can plug someone in right away. Plug and play systems. That's the that's the powerful piece here. So you have done a lot of great stuff with growth. I mean, your growth has been insane. I mean, you've had a six figure month recently, which was an epic post. It definitely went viral. So many people are so proud of you. And you know what that says? Thank it says you. a lot about you because people love you. They love your journey. You inspire people by getting to those peaks, you know, and that's very cool. It's like, not only are you making money, but you're being celebrated for making money, which is why, you know, I think we both love the direct sales industry in general versus the typical startup industry. Cause it's a lot more friendly and fun versus mm -hmm. like hardcore. Like what's going on? Like you have yeah. less, less friends in a typical startup, but in direct sales, you have more and more friends, more and more, more connections, more networking, just saying yeah. more networking. There's ups and downs. What, what, what turned the needle for you to get from say 50 K a month to hundred K a month? So it's funny, we did 125 that month. And then the next month I was just like, all right, I'm going to relax. And then I ended up beating that month, which was insane. So we had two and same track. It was scaling, honestly. It was knowing my value ladder, knowing exactly where I was going to take a customer in and the journey I was going to take them on. And I think that's really not talked about with a lot of coaches. And it kind of makes me sad because everyone deserves to know their value ladder. <laughs> Everyone deserves to know that they have to take a customer on a journey with them. And in order for you to scale, we only have a certain amount of time in our day and in our month and our year. So I'm one person. And through my brand, I can't duplicate myself for private coaching or duplicate myself for these masterminds. So I figured out my ladder and I figured out how to scale it quickly. And I figured out how to just love, love the way I'm scaling and really feel 1000% confident that people coming out of each program that I offer, they have real wins. And that was a big, big thing for me. I didn't want someone giving me a certain amount of money just because I wanted that money or just because they, you know, I thought I deserved that money. I know I deserve it. Of course I want it. But there's also that other piece where I want the impact. I want the testimonial. I want someone to win. I know exactly what wins I want them to have off each piece of that ladder. Yeah, that's so important. I mean, mm -hmm. there's too many people in the world creating stuff for themselves. They're not thinking about the end customer. And yes. it only will take you so far, right? Mm -hmm. uh, testimony. We are in the business of people talking to people. All you need is one bad review. I was talking to my buddy the other day. He's a photographer in LA and you know, every day he shoots gorgeous, gorgeous women. And I was just telling him, I'm like, yo, like, I mean, you're a straight guy. I mean, at, at some point, like what, where do you cross the line when you're just like talking? He says, when I'm, when there's a thing in just business, it's kind of like being blackballed even in, as a photographer. And this is, I'm, the reason I'm giving this example is this can spread across all industries. Yeah. You have a one bad review. You make one bad purchase, one bad Amazon review, and that ripple effect can just destroy everything you've worked for. It's what they, yeah. you can build a brand for 10 years and kill it in one day. I think they say something like that. And it's true. And so we have to, we have to continue to know exactly how we want our customers to come out of every situation and fight for our customers. You know, we're going to have those people that complain. We're going to have those people that, you know, it doesn't make sense why they're complaining. We have people that return. We have people that aren't happy. But if you have a process of how you deal with the unhappy customers, if you have a process of the integrity and the morals and the values of your company, that's going to shine through more than, you know, a complaining customer. What was the hardest challenge in that, say, 25 to 125 come up that just you tried, you outsourced it, and it still just drove you nuts? It was like that one thing that looking back, you kind of wish you could have done a little bit differently, even just two or three months ago. <laughs> I wish I would have stopped being so hard headed and not listening to my husband who because he's not in this world, I was like not listening to him, to be honest. And he's a smart guy. And I needed outside sources that weren't in the field, that weren't in the digital marketing world to look at what I was doing from the outside and be like, that's not working because of this. Even if it didn't make sense to, to me, there was something in what he was saying that made me stop and be like, I need to reevaluate my ladder. 
I need to reevaluate the journey I'm taking these people on. Cause it was like, I was launching something, launching something, launching something, launching something. And I'm like, I don't want to launch anymore. I know what my launches are. I know what I'm giving. I know the journey I want to take them on. And it was like, this is the journey. And then I went all in with it and I feel so much better, so much better about not only the money I'm making, but the impact I'm making, the journey that I know that I'm taking them on. Like this, this year we're doing our very first event. I am scared out of my mind, 200 people, right? So like we're looking at places, but that's that next that's that next scale for me. That's that next level. I want to bring the community together. I want to take it offline and put people in a room together, put women in a room together and do our thing. So just knowing that, knowing where you want to take the customer to take you is important and listen to outside people, maybe not take action on what you hear from them, but there's a nugget and there's a reason that it's coming to you for whatever it is. Yeah. That makes, that makes so much sense. I mean, referral channels are, are so important too, and just constantly growing. I look mm-hmm. at what has been the best for you? Is it word of mouth? Are you putting out content weekly? Like where, yeah. where is, you know, a it's lot all of you- organic, you know, it's all organic. I don't have these massive funnels. I mean, that's, we're working on those right now, but I've never had like um, the million dollar funnel. No, this is organic. And a lot of people will hear that and be like, oh, you want to do it her way, all organic? I am powerful with an organic following. So just an FYI, now I can 10X it with a funnel. <laughs> but, you know, I think for me, it was um, with the organic traffic, it's, I was showing up the same time consistently, something I learned from Tanya, showing up consistently every single week with my blog. That was huge. Um, and I never not, I did a lot of free calls in the beginning. I did a lot of free trainings in the beginning. I did a lot of free value. And it was because I was learning of what my audience wanted. And that was huge for me. And then it, it was word of mouth. It was, I was over delivering and I still do. I'm running a challenge right now. It was nine bucks and it was probably way too much information I'm giving. And I don't care. I over deliver because I'm coming from a place to give. I'm serving my audience. And I think that that's a big piece of it. Also networking with the right people. I'm sharing their stuff. Collaborations. That's huge. People are, people aren't working with each other. They're competing with each other. I'm going to go collab with as many people as I can. I'm going to celebrate as many people as I can. I'm going to celebrate, you know, the people that are doing things better than me. I don't care if some of my audience leaves me and follows someone else. They weren't meant to be my audience, you know? So I think it's, um, it's, it's all of that. (laughs) It's all of that. That abundance mindset, man, that, that takes a while to develop, especially when you first get involved. I, I definitely didn't have it two years ago. I was very competitive, very competitive. And now I'm very like, what can I do for you? Yeah. And that's something that I got from Tanya when I first met her. It's like the first thing she said, I was talking about, I was moving to Colombia, and she's like, oh, well, I know somebody that teaches Spanish. I'm like, wait, what, what, what? Like, <laughs> like the first thing you said to me is like, oh, I can, I know I have a friend who can help teach you Spanish. And I was like, yo, paradigm shift. Mm-hmm. There's this chick just figuring out a way to give me some sort of value. And mm-hmm. that has impacted my life too. I mean, even with our podcast, I think the, the growth we've had with the podcast is that it's not about me. It's just about everything I can do to help build these people up. And then those relationships that I develop offline turn into amazing friendships and friendships. And you're, and you're killing awesome it stuff. too. You know and I mean? you're, and you're absolutely killing it. We see you, I see you, you're <laughs> killing it. And so it's, it's definitely a piece of that. You know, I think that if more people could understand the whole collaboration process, they would get to where they want to be a lot quicker and they'll feel better about when they get there. hundred percent. And it just lifts you up to when you find yourself being toe and toe with people that you only dream of and you realize that they're humans. And that still always blows my mind, right? You look at anybody that you're super excited about, say, you know, it could be Ray Higdon. It could be John Melton. It could be, you know, Lloyd Banks, whoever it Mm -hmm. is, right? When you actually meet somebody like that and you realize that they're really, really good at what they do, but they might suck at a lot of other things that you're mm-hmm. pretty good at. And mm-hmm. it makes them realize that they're super human and normal. 
And like when you're speaking backstage to these people and like right before you get on stage, you're like, oh, you know, they they go to the bathroom too. Like they're just yeah. totally normal people. And then yeah. your brain elevates and then you're like, oh, damn, it's a whole new world. That's it's crazy. Right. Just every level it's has crazy. a new devil, but every level also has angels to help you as you go, you know? Oh, I love that. That's awesome. I love that. So if you could go back, right, and this is pre your online college career, taking everything mm -hmm. you know now, you know, before your kids and all this stuff, what would you say if you could have said one, two or three things that could have saved you a ton of time, money, heartache and headache? You know, what three things come into mind that you just kind of wish you could have been like, listen, girl, we got five minutes. Let's go. So if it's this me talking to the old me, it wouldn't have mattered, to be <laughs> honest, because she was a stubborn human. I think personally, and I know this is going to be like probably not what everybody wants to hear. I needed to go through what I went through. I needed the pain. I needed the suffering. I needed I needed the humility. I needed to be humbled. I needed to I needed a transformation. I know that now. And the only thing that I think that I would change about my journey is the way I treated my husband on the way up to success. Just bringing him just because he, I mean, at the end of the day, he's a stay at home dad now. Like I, I bring in all the income, but it's our business. It was his money that started our brand, our business, our thing. And I re I regret that on the way up, but I truly feel like everyone's journey is a journey for a reason. And I truly feel like even the coaches that I feel like maybe I supposedly wasted money on when I had those moments of boo-hoo, I was supposed to be in that place in that moment. And for me, it's kind of like this whole transformation. That's my word for 2020 is transformation. I want to I want to be able to transform into someone that empowers people to embrace where they are but still have the vision of where they want to go but but they've got to go through that crap to get to the other side. Yeah. That's that's so powerful. Just becoming who I was 3 years ago is so different from who I am today. Yeah. I could it's never I could never have told myself at at 19 or 20 that I wouldn't be just absolutely raging, you know, like just parting my face off. I remember, yeah, I remember I was like a freshman and sophomore in college looking at the seniors and juniors that were super lame. And I still remember this. I still actually agree with how I thought. Like there was people, I, I lived in a fraternity and there was like these seniors that were just so lame. Like they would never party, never have fun. I was just like, yo, you guys are lame. We're in college. Like let's party. Like let's have a good time. But then it's just like as you elevate, as you get older, as circumstances change your health becomes such a priority alcohol ruins your health so all of a sudden when you drink it becomes a big deal it's not like a small deal anymore little uh -uh. things become a big deal becoming a creature of habit so nice traveling the world is sick and you know i plan on doing it and I, everyone wants to do that but waking up having your morning coffee and doing your daily method of operations is damn nice too uh -huh. i never thought that just having a cup of coffee could be such an unbelievable part of my day just going to a coffee shop and being like bam i'm here what up yeah it's powerful it's powerful when you have when you know the path that you want to go to and you know the small simple steps that you're going to take every day to get you there it gives you that confidence in knowing that you're moving forward towards the, and that doesn't mean that there's not going to be obstacles that doesn't mean that there's not going to be like hills and valleys and steeps and people are going to knock you down and all that no but you have to have that clear vision of knowing where you want to go and you'll get through anything. Believe me, you can get through anything. One, one thing that I've heard that's changed my life and I want to hear your favorite, not quote, but method of operation. It was Bob Heilig. Bob Heilig said one thing once and I was like, oh, damn. He said, B minus work changes lives. Mm. And that just blew, that blew my mind. I mean, it's on my wall over there. It's just like, yeah. That whole idea that you don't have to be perfect, like you said, if you're going to outsource, being consistent is more important than perfect. Humans aren't yep. perfect, but over time you'll get better. Is there a certain kind of slang or logo or phrase that you kind of live your life by or try to? 
Yeah. So last year it was go do more, which was super important for me because I feel like I could always do more and go and do more, right? So just be more, do more, always tap into your fullest potential. Um, this year it's really em embracing embracing where I'm at. So I don't think there's like one specific quote for me right now. Right now it's really about embracing who I am, like to the fullest, like the imperfections, the good, the bad, the ugly, and, and really sharing that with my audience. Um, it's building a very strong tribe. Our, our tribe of healers, which is our, you know, the name of our healer, our, our tribe, we call them healers. My brand is Moms and Heals. And, and seeing these women that are raising their hands and saying, I needed to hear that. Thank you for being raw. I used to intimidate people. People were scared to open up to me because I was always so professional. I was always giving the good value and coming in hard. And now I'm like showing them the humanity, the human, the humility, the humbleness. I'm showing them the real me. And it's just, and again, embracing this transformation for this year. That's my main focus. Yeah, Scaling to seven was last year. Now I know what I'm doing. And now I want to embrace this transformation. Yeah. Your spirit animal is definitely a lioness. Yeah. I can feel that. She's, yeah. I got to tame her sometimes. Though. You can I, you, tame her. I feel like you can tear, <laughs> you can tear people up. At this, but at the same time, you know, you can raise the pack. Yeah, same. I did that today to someone who decided to comment wrongly on my <laughs> post. He got a little bit of that lioness this morning. So this is uh, some, kind of like a staple that we always ask our guests. And it comes down to, you know, there's people right now that are on the fence about starting their own business. And mm -hmm. they are working a, you know, a, a great job, great career or a terrible job, terrible career. And they're on the fence. They listen to this content every single week. And they're, they're always hearing amazing stories of people that stepped out. What would you say to that person that's right on the fence of jumping into entrepreneurship head over heels for the first time? One, make a decision and set the right expectations of knowing that this isn't going to be just easy peasy. I think that's the biggest thing is like, whether you're opening a shoe store, I say this all the time, opening a shoe store, starting a network marketing business or launching an online digital business or launching an online store, whatever, you have to set the right expectations for yourself. You have to have a plan. So one of the things that I do every single year, like for 2020 is I had a plan of where I want 2020 to be at the very end. And I reverse engineered that. Reverse engineer that plan for yourself and then know exactly what is it that you have to do? What steps do you have to take? All of that stuff, right? I'm sorry, my pool just turned on. So you're probably going to hear that in the background now. I don't but, hear um, it. <laughs> oh, you don't? Okay, good. So what is that, that going to look like? So you have the right expectations and you know what that hustle is. I said this the other day to one of my clients. They were like, you know, I'm just really nervous, right? Because they're scared. I'm, I, I have this idea. How do I monetize it? How do I make money off of it? Instead of thinking about how can I take this idea and make money off of it, how can I take this idea and serve people, make an impact with people, and then monetize it? Then reverse engineer what that looks like, sit down and make a plan like you have to go ask a bank for money, and then launch it. Yeah, that's like the jab, 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 right hook. There it is. Yep. Yeah, exactly. And, and nowadays you can take anything you want and build a career out of it. We just had this dude named Finney and Make Peace, complete left field, not typically who I'd bring onto the show. He is a regenerative agriculture specialist. So he does regenerative oh, wow. farming, which is basically a new way of healing the soil. It's absolutely fascinating. Ooh. And I asked them, you know, they're a nonprofit. How do they make money? And what they do is they, well, one of the methods is that they sell courses on how to teach people to build and become regenerative farmers. So Ooh. that's an impact that is changing the world. You know, I someone, love that. Someone could take a $200 course and with that knowledge, they could heal hundreds and hundreds of acres of land. I love that. That's so cool. It's just so interesting at what's possible now with the internet, with building following and your brand, the healers and mom and heels is so powerful. Are your, feet, you. are your feet like permanently effed up from wearing heels too much? 
I mean, no, but I also was pregnant and I wasn't rocking heels the whole time. And I got to be honest, I'm mostly in like, you know, pajamas most of the day now. But if I go out in public, I like to rock my heels. It gives me that confidence. It gives me that. That's where it started. And my mom actually, when she gave birth to me, she had pink fluffy high heels on. So it kind of just goes with the whole goes with the whole thing for us. Did you have a moment where you're like, this is it? This is my brand because you know that time when you start trying yeah. to build a brand, you get so caught up on just like, what's my tribe going to be? What's my yeah. name going to be? And it like yeah, holds so, you up. <laughs> so no, I, I already knew what I wanted to do. Moms and Heels was actually supposed to be completely different than what it is right now. It was supposed to be for women that were just looking for a place to promote their businesses. And it also was my foundation that I'm going to, that's my big goal, right? For women with mental illness and women with, you know, addiction and domestic violence. And that's that big picture. But everybody wanted network marketing training. They wanted branding training for me. So that's where it ended up going. But it was funny when I was sitting on the couch, I'll never, I'll remember like sitting on the couch, I had my laptop. I'm like, I'm buying moms and heels. I'm buying the website, not in heels and heels, right? I'm buying this domain. And then I was like, and I'm going to sell stuff on Amazon. That's where I went first. I'm going to, I'm going to buy stuff from China and I'm going to resell it on Amazon. I'm going to make my own lip plumper. I'm going to make my own lipstick. This is where I first went with it. And I'm totally nowhere near that. Right. So it's funny. It started that way, but it ended up being something completely different because it was where I was being called to. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So, so if you could have done, I mean, everything you're just saying is really inspiring. It's cool because you're real, you're authentic, you're making it happen. And you know what? People can duplicate what you're doing. And I think that you're literally on the breakthrough of something so massive. I can first see you in the next year or two being that like, I'm glad I'm friends with you now because in, <laughs> a, year, in a year it's going to be hard to be extra hard to be friends with Marina Simone. <laughs> oh my God. I love you. You're so awesome. Thank you. What is it that you'd want to close off with our audience? Is there anything that you'd want to share about the journey, about the struggle, about the come up? that yeah. you know, somebody could take and then implement into their life? I think one of the biggest things for me was really just knowing that nobody was going to necessarily 100% get me and not in my family. I love them. And even my husband, sometimes he doesn't get the ideas and decisions that I have and that I want to make and the investments I want to make and learning and growing and I had to be okay with sometimes being and feeling very alone on this journey. And with mental illness, that can be scary sometimes. So for those of you that do have anxiety, depression, like you're, you're, you can be okay. And it's okay to ask for help. And, it's, and the biggest piece for me was finding the people who were at where I wanted to be and, and finding ways to be around them. That has been the biggest thing for me. I will invest money over and over and over if I can sit in the room where I am the smallest income earner, where I am the smallest person making the smallest impact. You know, I, if I want to grow, I have to surround myself with the people that are where I want to be. And that's what I do now. And I wish I would have did that sooner. Um, instead of just complaining about where I wanted to go and where I wanted to be, it was more of invest my time, energy, and money to be around the people I want to be like. Yeah, your your tribe, man, sticking around that influence, people that are building you up, hanging around with the Marina Simones. One day, Aww. you know, one day hopefully we'll all be in a room where we're the smallest in the room and Marina Simone is out there teaching. So oh my gosh, thank you. you. So how can people follow the journey if they want to hear more about you and, and get more involved? Yeah, my biggest thing is on Instagram. So y'all can follow me on Instagram. It's at Marina and Simone. So M A R I N A A N N S I M O N E. Yes, somebody already had Marina Simone. I tried to message her. She had no interest in messaging me back. So we'll just put that out there. Um, and then, like, literally, like all my stuff to connect to my website or to me or anything, you know, I'm there. That's where I really spend a lot of my time. We have a free Facebook group. You can find that through my Instagram too. Free training for moms who slay. You know, that's really it. Free training for moms who slay. <laughs> moms who slay online sales. That's my thing thing. Cubicle to throne. Merry our, Christmas, our... baby. We are slaying out here. We're right. slaying. With that said, we appreciate you. Thanks so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me.